Before you start recording with Pro Tools Key Studio, you need to connect your gear to the M-Audio USB Micro audio interface. Connect your headphones or powered speakers to the USB Micro's 1 8 inch output. You cannot use your computer's built-in sound card, headphone output, or laptop speakers with Pro Tools. To record audio into the computer, connect a microphone, instrument, or a line level source to the USB Micro's 8 inch input. Depending on your external equipment, you may need an adapter. To connect a guitar cable, you will need a quarter inch female to eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter male adapter. Since a guitar is a mono instrument, you need a mono adapter like this one. Notice there is only one black ring on this adapter, dividing it into the tip and sleeve, or TS for short. Your headphones or speakers on the other hand are stereo, and their connectors will have two black rings dividing it into the tip, ring, and sleeve, or TRS for short. Dynamic microphones like the M-Audio Soundcheck can be used with the USB Micro. To connect, you need a 3-pin XLR female to 8th inch or 3.5 millimeter male cable. If you own a computer microphone with an 8th inch connector, you may be able to use that. Some computer microphones require power to operate, and while your computer's built-in sound card provides this power, the USB Micro does not. Condenser microphones cannot be used with the USB Micro without an external power supply. If you are unsure if your microphone is a dynamic or condenser, refer to its documentation. Otherwise, hook it up, and if it works, it's a dynamic, and if it doesn't, it's probably a condenser. If you haven't already, Launch Pro Tools Empowered Essential. You have several options here on the Quick Start screen. The session templates are great because they include preloaded tracks, instruments, and effects for the selected musical style. Let's get started and select the Songwriter Pianist template. You can rename your session, as well as change the location to save the file. Click Save, and Pro Tools will load your new session. When the session loads, play a few keys on your Key Studio 49 keyboard, and you will hear a piano and see the meters respond in Pro Tools. We'll come back to this, but first, let's take a quick look at the Pro Tools interface. There are two main windows in Pro Tools, the Mix window and the Edit window. You can use the keyboard shortcut Control Equal or Command Equal on Mac to toggle between the Mix and Edit windows. Every track in the edit window has a corresponding channel in the mix window. In the mix window, you have a volume fader, solo, mute, and record enable buttons, and above that, pan control. At the top of the window, you have inserts and sends. Inserts are where you insert effects and signal processors. Here's an equalizer plugin inserted on the female vocal track. When you want to add the same effect to multiple tracks, like Reverb for example, you use the Sends and Return tracks. Here you can see that Send A is set up for Reverb. On the Reverb Return track is the Dverb Reverb plugin. The Sends allow you to send a track's audio signal to be processed. The more you send, the more effect you will hear. Let's switch to the edit window by pressing Control equal or Command equal on Mac. The transport controls appear at the top of the edit window. To the left is the counter which shows bars and beats. It can also display minutes and seconds. Next to that are your editing tools. And all of the tracks appear along the left side. Click the small triangle on the far right to show zoom controls. I'm going to click to zoom out so I can see more of the timeline. You can also click and drag to zoom. Let's also go to the options menu and make sure that loop playback and dynamic transport are disabled or unchecked. In the next video, we're going to start building our song by bringing in one of the Pro Tools Essential Loops.